to, to, to the um, to the workbench. Um, yeah, I, I think of the. I, I don't think of it as a studio. Uh, I have to say at this point, I think of this uh, as a laboratory. Um, so it's very much uh, a place where art and science meet. Uh, I'm very much in favour of the art science bridge, really, because there's so much of beauty within science. And I, educationally, I do feel so much that so much of science can be learnt through art and vice versa. Um, I, I don't really stick to this um, opposing idea that you hear debated on television about whether to fund science more or art more, because I think they're the same thing in the end. If only they were seen in that way, I think we'd all benefit. But here, um, I've just, this is my recent acquisition, I found this ring, which is obviously what comes off the top of the dustbin. Um, on one of my walks and it was so perfectly circular I thought aha here we go and um, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just letting that cook as it were on a paper soaked in brine and you can see um, something that relates to a documentary I saw the other night which was about um, Soho and the solar explore explorations and you've almost got a solar flare occurring at the top here and this is what's so beautiful about the, the unexpected nature of, of this work um, and here we have a circle which is almost like the solar disk with, with flares coming off it, which is something that relates very much to a lot of the iron well, and copper work, which is that you, you're sensing... I would almost want people who are watching, who are looking at it, to sort of imagine, to suspend their disbelief and imagine, perhaps, even though it's perhaps not so, but to imagine that there are... this is witnessing energy, that this is an imprint of some sort of energy within the material itself, that, that this is... Um, a sensitive um, piece of material that actually detects that side of things. So I thought that was uh, interesting. And again, um, the ring of a dustbin um, uh, here again is transformed. Uh, so we have the simplest of things, the simplest of objects, and again man-made, transformed into something else. The bridging that gap between practical, functional item becoming something that's a work of art. Well, if you, if you want for what you want to call a work of art, I'm not sure, but we have a piece of copper on the go here, which I'm just about to remove. It's probably not dry enough yet, but you kind of can see the giving up of the, the copper. This is experimenting again with um, what I'm using here is malt vinegar, although I've been using distilled vinegar lately because of its clarity. And it's much more allows the paper to, to remain white. It's basically a bath of um, vinegar-soaked paper, and then it's a question of choosing the piece of copper from the vapor bath um, and laying it. And what's so exciting is that you could, in theory, have an entire exhibition all drawn from one object because each one would be different each one would have a different effect and do a different thing and I, in fact I think this is the way I'm going to go next is to have the same object repeated as an installation because in a sense that would almost give you more of an idea of the, es the essential quality of the work and I shall just leave that for a few days and see what happens and have the excitement of coming back into the room every day checking out what's going on I can smell the vinegar you can smell the vinegar um, very different to another piece of work which I did which was called domestic science and that had a similar um, principle in that it was shown in multiples in one case uh, with alternative arts it was a multiple of 200 pieces and what it was was um, domestic jelly in CD cases um, which actually smelt of strawberries and pineapple and blackcurrant <laughs> as you went into the gallery uh, this is the spicy version because it smells of salt and vinegar mm. so um, I find that quite amusing that I've gone from sweet to spicy but um, of um, uh, the idea of um, radio telescopes. I mean, radio astronomy. Um, 
there are, there are all sorts of things which link in with this. Um, and again, radio astronomy is is a kind of is the audio version of a trace element. I'm, I, it's just thinking why why is it why is this idea of the trace element so important? I mean, I, the things that come to mind again in retrospect, having done work and then you think about it, are the Turin shroud, which is such a whether it's real or not is such a, a, a subtle indication of something that might have been, which is now trapped in the material. Um, the reverence which is given by humanity is is a work in itself. And I guess that's what I'm trying to feel here with this, is that when you remove the object, you're left with this trace, you're left with a memory, you're left with something that's burnt in, which is, al is almost like the way the human mind works. Um, and so uh, you also have this with radio astronomy, you have a trace, you have, again, as I was saying right at the beginning, the, the little, you have the white paper, or you have the silence, and then any little blip, any little perturbation in that is, is noticeable, and it's significant, and it's given, it's, it's offered such significance by us, because of what it represents, and I just love that highly charged um, attention to something so small that it's become so important. It kind of reverses, it. it's, it's an antithesis as I say to the world of uh, over loud media and over colourful media and uh, stuff that's pushed down our throat. And we, there's so much noise out there. It's so nice to m contemplate things which are, have concentrated meaning in, in almost nothing. It just, it's, a, it's a kind of meditation, a kind of mantra. reading um, about Curlian photography. In fact, I've been looking at, you know, interested, uh, aware of Curlian photography for some years, ever since my Aikido teacher, my martial arts teacher, um, practiced this in principle. He put his hand on an, the, the sensing plate that they have with Curlian photography and extended his energy and the flares, as it were, went off the edge of the border and then he practiced withdrawing his energy and the flares reduced to close to his fingers so it showed us that it actually does exist I thought you know that this is perhaps as I say I would I would want people to think that this is what they're witnessing on when they're seeing these uh, manifestations the impregnations and this is iron filings this one which relates to one, recording actually, this is a sort of one-off experiment which might go further or it might not I think it might be too blatant but it's a bar, I put a magnetic bar behind um, and spread iron filings on the front, uh, again with the use of brine, um, and wanted to capture something of the, the radiating mag magnetosphere, as it were, around the metal. Um, in a sense, I'm not as happy with that as I am with the supposed energy, because that actually is. Uh, <laughs> in a sense, that, that is, and it stays there, it's finished, that is what it is. Whereas with this, the imagination can, can work more, because it isn't actually recording the, magnet, the, the, the fields of energy, but you can imagine that it is. And I think when, when you're involved, there's so much more in the work than when you're just... I mean, this, this in a sense, here could be the difference between scientific proof and artistic illusion. How does this relate to music, the iron filings and the... Well, I mean, I, I, I was working for many, many years, the last 30 years, on, on uh, magnetic tape, um, doing audio recordings, um, uh, experimenting with, with audio tape in a very physical way, uh, being very aware that there are iron particles on that tape, um, and, and it's run past a magnet, which is the head, and it's recorded onto it. The, the particles are rearranged, and then they're interpreted by the next head, which is a magnetic sensor. And this this idea of iron and magnetism, I guess, has been in my unconscious for a long time. So the idea of recording something, as in these trace elements works, in a sense, these trace elements works are almost <laughs> the visual manifestation, if you like, of what goes on on magnetic tape. 
And um, again, I'm glad I'm old enough to have been around to have open reel tapes and magnetic tape. Thinking of the uh, origins, uh, as I was saying before, you always think of origins really. Well, I do when I'm working. I, I sort of work <laughs> work backwards in a sense from where I am. Um, and um, I'm just sort of going back as I work, I get very excited about the connection. I don't know why, I kind of, I guess, guess it reinforces what you're doing now. It's kind of like somebody else patting you on the shoulder. It's kind of finding that you had a thread after all and that all these amazingly disparate pieces of work actually do come together somewhere. There is a sort of tree trunk where all these branches come into, which is a nice sort of holistic feeling, um, I feel. And I've always been very interested in science, as, as I've said, and, and uh, documentaries that, uh, you know, explore astronomy and the sciences, particle physics, let's say, um, radio astronomy. There's something, there's always been something for me about the, the, the sound, the, uh, the analysis, if you like, of something. And in the sense of radio astronomy, it's an analysis of uh, something that's given such an auspicious meaning uh, and to the layman, it's just a noise. Um, uh, but to the scientist, to the astronomer, to the radio astronomer, this little blip, this little crackle, is of, of amazing importance. Um, and again, for me, this is, a, if you like, comes under the umbrella of trace elements.